the HX Outdoors brand, I've got a bit of experience with. First of all, I reviewed this knife, the Rock. God, this is a real rotten old log. <laughs> but I didn't realise it was going to stick in like that. Ah, there we go. But anyway, I reviewed this knife, the HX Outdoors. Comes with a great sheath setup too, Fursey and Rod. This was an absolutely beautiful knife. I really like this for the moment. A real tremendous uh, survival hunting general camp utility knife. And then after that, the guys at HX Outdoors, they sent me this, the D144. A little bit different, a little bit lighter weight. Uh, concave grind. And to be honest, after this knife, although there's nothing really wrong with this knife, there's nothing really that right with it. It looks good and it feels nice in hand. But the grind is not really conducive to great carving, which you might want to do in the bushcraft adventures you're on there. And I thought it was a little bit weak at the point too. But anyway, it was, it was an expensive knife. So if you did pick one up, if you have got one of these, I think it's a good knife for you. It's just in comparison to this one, it suffered a little bit. So very excited to have been given or sent to review this folding knife from HX Outdoors. It's a semi-automatic liner locked knife and it's big for a folder. Look at this, it's got actually a bigger, a longer cutting edge than the rock. Bigger blade than the uh, D144. Let's talk about it. Let's get the vital statistics out of the way. It's the HX Outdoors ZD01B. Yep, dead catchy name once again from the boys at HX Outdoors. The ZD010B. G10 handles, liner lock, semi automatic opening mechanism. HCR14 MOV is the blade steel for you guys. It's 10 centimeter blade. That's a shade over 3.9 inches. Retailing, as of today, around $14 at gearbest.com. As always, link down in the description box. This is a thunderously fun knife, guys. This is a big, beefy pocket knife. Sometimes knives don't have to be any more than that. Just a fun bit of tactile enjoyment. What's wrong? We're going around with a solid bit of steel in your pocket. That's what this is. I mean, for bushcrafting, general stuff, I love a fixed blade knife. I like to back it up with a little folder. But this is no way you can say this is a backup knife. This is bigger than most. Or well, bigger than most. I'm going to get pulled up on that. This is as big as a lot of fixed blades, right? This is just a fun knife that if you want a knife, which is big, bold, brash, and opens smoothly with a delightful clunk, clunk. Pick it up. Let's have a look inside. You can see the build on that side and on that side. I'm not saying this is gonna be the world's greatest knife it's a cheap knife but for the money i think it's an absolute honking delicious piece of steel i love the blade shape i like the way they've polished the flats here but then as they go on to the primary grind they've kind of left it left it brushed it's got a nice swedge coming down to the point. I think they've just really knocked it out of the park on the design. I'm not gonna bother with any lame cutting tests in this review, but I am collecting horseshoe fungus just at the moment for a little project that I've got on going. So we'll just use it to collect some horseshoe fungus. And when I was walking up this path, I looked down, I saw this D-144 
dead birch. And pa-ting, look at this. I've got my microphone all caught up in it. Let's unravel that. Let's bring this up to the camera. That one is a bit deformed because he's been growing on the underside. But I think this is going to be good for my purposes. I'm going to be making amadou. So let me carve this off. Test Plucking off that horseshoe fungus has resulted in a catastrophic failure of this knife. A complete fail. It's beyond repair. It's going to be difficult for you to see, but I'll try and describe what's happened. I'll push it in. Oh, the log just collapsed under my arse. A catastrophic failure of the log. Never mind. What has actually happened is the locking bar has crumpled, collapsed underneath the pressure the torsion of the blade and where it's collapsed is here you can see hopefully this semicircular indent that's where basically the spring pressure of what is then the locking bar is like a flat spring created by they make the shape in the actual stock so then the locking blade can come down, let's set focus by me again, can come down again. And then as it goes across, it creates a wedge, a blocking bar into the base of the blade. And I reviewed the, the video, and when I was, imagine the knife is coming out straight now, when I was going in this plane, backwards and forwards, so I was putting pressure on here, it pushed down, completely collapsed the locking blade, the locking bar, sorry, completely collapsed the locking bar, so the locking bar is now on the wrong side of the blade, both underneath it, and it's also on the wrong side in this direction, so it's actually gone down in a diagonal direction. So it's completely crumpled underneath the pressure of the bar pushing down on it. Which, to be honest, surprised me. It demonstrates to me that this is a very weak spot on this blade. Now, discussion time. What I did with the blade in trying to pry off the horseshoe fungus, and I did finish off prying it off with the, my fixed blade, no problems. Was that a fair test? <clears throat> well, for a $15 folding knife, probably the manufacturers, they're not expecting you to go out and do that with it. It's for opening boxes, cutting cords, hanging around in your pocket. That's my opinion. It's, it's virgin on the toy. Like, it's just a good looking folding knife, which doesn't cost a lot of money. It's virgin on a toy. It's not a real serious professional tool. But again, and on the other hand, you can review the video scroll back and watch it again, was I really being tough with it? I wasn't going, putting all my weight onto it. Definitely not. I was actually being very gentle with it because I didn't want to break it. I wanted to use enough force to get the horseshoe fungus off, but not go, you know, radical on it and really go crazy on it. And it's actually, the, the, the knife will not go up and it will not go down anymore now. I did try and wedge it out with a couple of knives. We'll try and loosen it up, but I can't do it. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do it, really. 
I just, I think it's just something to be thrown away. <coughs> now, at the start of that little segment, I said I don't, I'm not going to do any lame knife cutting tests with it. What I mean by lame knife cutting tests is I see a lot of YouTubers and they're cutting paracord or they're slicing through cardboard with a knife. To be honest, what does that tell anybody? That a knife can cut paracord or can cut through paper or cardboard? So I, for me, that's not a test. And I see channels and they do that religiously in every single one of the knife tests. They say, oh look, it can cut through paracord. One, one strain of paracord and cut through two pound strains of paracord. I mean, seriously, if a knife cannot cut through paracord, why are we even turning the, the camera on to record it? For me, that's just stupid. I think paper tests are a different thing when you actually cut through one piece of paper because that can really demonstrate how sharp the actual specific sharpness of a blade. But come on, a butter knife. I mean, the only thing that a knife that shouldn't cut through a piece of paracord is basically a butter knife, and that will if you saw it backwards and forwards. So I'll have, I've got no real time for those kind of cutting through uh, cardboard, cutting through uh, <coughs> paracord lame arsed tests. Sorry, just getting a fluff of the microphone out of the way of the, the lens. But then again, then you can veer off to the other extreme and you can do two extreme tests. Now this test cutting off uh, a horseshoe fungus, was that in the design specs for this knife? Is that why somebody would buy this knife? Probably not. But then if you're carrying this knife, are you ever, is it inconceivable that you're not going to be doing faced with a task that you do have to pull this knife out and do something a little bit tougher do something slightly outside the main envelope design envelope of cutting through packaging and cutting through cordage with a handy little knife like this and i think the answer to that is yes yeah, sooner or later you may be faced with a situation where you need to do something a little bit tougher and now you can see that this knife won't do anything tougher it's good for cutting paper cutting cardboard cutting cordage hanging around in your pocket, flick getting out and flicking batters and forwards while you're watching TV or stuff like that. That's all it is. But having said that, if that's what you want your knife to do, I think it's a good knife. But if you want it to do anything else, a little bit too weak, isn't it? Thanks very much for watching. If you're a subscriber, thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not yet a subscriber, please take a look at a few more of my videos. If you like what you see, smash down on that subscribe button. And until the next time, have a great time.